In life, my grandmother was a particularly cruel woman, a true disciplinarian. She was a strictly devout woman and was very superstitious, so much so that if you spilled salt in her house, you'd get a shoe across the face before you could throw it over your shoulder. You could say she had a special way of bringing out the best in people by being genuinely awful to them. I was never any more mischievous than any of the other kids my age, but somehow I always ended up getting the harshest punishments out of anyone in my friend group. On one such occasion, that I happen to remember especially clearly, my best friend Eddie and I broke into a neighbor's shed to steal some cans of spray paint when we were twelve. We spent that afternoon raising holy hell in the alleys around our houses. We took turns tagging the neighbor's garages with a slew of obscenities. Well, we were so caught up in the mayhem we were causing that we didn't notice Eddie's father walk up behind us. Uh, he was a large, burly-looking man who worked in a steel mill all of his life. He grabbed our collars, lifting us straight off the ground. I remember being convinced that I'd piss myself out of fear. He said in his booming voice, Well, well, look what the cat dragged in. Just what in the hell do you two think you're doing? I'm sorry, Dad, Eddie stammered out before adding, It was Mark's idea, while pointing at me. What the fuck it was, shithead, I blurted back. Eddie's father's voice boomed suddenly. Both of you, stop babbling. Eddie, you're going to go door-to-door -door apologizing to the neighbors for being a moron. And you're going to clean this mess up along with anything else they asked you to do. He turned to look at me next, squinting his eyes as he loomed over me. And as for you, young man, oh, your grandmother will be ashamed of you. What the hell's wrong with kids these days? Before I could say anything, he dropped us both onto our asses and promptly marched me the two blocks back to my house, Eddie still in tow. When we arrived, he calmly knocked on the door. We waited a moment, and then my grandmother answered the door. I've been looking for you all day. Where on God's green earth have you been? She snapped, her face contorting. Before I could say anything, Eddie's dad had spoken up. Ah, caught these two idiots vandalizing the neighborhood, he said while letting out a chuckle. Ah, kids, eh? And grandmother was not amused. She dragged me into the house and promptly smacked me across the face. Are you going to learn your lesson one way or another, boy? She snarled at me. You're lucky I even took you at all. I don't think I was particularly lucky at all because by that point... My parents had been dead for seven years. I didn't learn how they died until much later in my life. All I knew was that I was stuck with this witch of a woman who was my grandmother. For this particular instance, she locked me in the basement pantry for at least two days with no food or water. The only company that I had was a bucket in the corner for excrement and the occasional rat. The pantry was a dark, dingy place that reeked of mold. The damp concrete floor of the pantry made for a subpar bed, to say the least. You could hear the water moving through the rusted pipes and the creaking of the ancient floorboards above. I survived that stint in the pantry without any trouble. After all, I was quite used to it by that point. I tried to avoid being home for the remainder of my teenage years to avoid enduring more torment at the hands of that vile woman, but I could only do so much. Between the regular verbal abuse and the beatings, I only ended up back in the pantry a few times before I ran away to couch surf when I was 15. Most of these were simply uneventful and miserable, but there was one other occasion that will never leave my mind. This occasion is why I decided to take my chances with homelessness. I was late coming home from Eddie's house once when I was 15, and I found myself imprisoned in that godforsaken pantry yet again. Well, over the years, and my many stints being locked away from the world, I'd learned to pass the time by doing push-ups and other exercises. On top of that, I'd become very adept at positioning my body on the concrete floor to get some sleep. The loneliness didn't bother me anymore. Anything was better than my grandmother's company. But this time was different. I wasn't alone in that pantry. 
I heard footsteps around me constantly, but I never actually saw anything. I remember the feeling of dread when I felt someone's warm breath on the back of my neck. When I turned to face whoever was in there with me, well, there was nothing, just the pitch black of the basement. The experience was maddening by itself, but it was only perpetuated by the constant pacing of my grandmother upstairs. At all hours I heard the floorboards creaking and incoherent muttering. She would ramble and pace at all hours of the day, muttering things like, No, no, anything but that. And, oh, I know your tricks. You can't take him while he's in there. These outbursts were accompanied by pounding and the sounds of glass shattering. Well, I had no idea what was happening, but I assumed that she'd finally snapped. Finally, after what had to have been days of dealing with phantom footsteps, breathing, and hearing my mother's psychotic antics coming from upstairs, it all stopped. I died, leaving me trapped in here to starve to death or slip into the madness that was surely overcoming me. I hadn't been crazy before this incident, but now I wasn't so sure. I started hearing an incessant whisper of, Let me in, coming from outside the pantry. Then one day I heard frantic footsteps coming down the stairs. All of a sudden the pantry door flew open and I was blinded by an unknown light. It was my grandmother brandishing a lantern. Oh, she seemed frantic. Her eyes had a deranged glint to them. Get out of my house, boy. You can't behave. Leave and never come back. She screamed as she pushed me aside and threw herself into the pantry, locking it from the inside. I'd never noticed that it had locks on both sides until then. Without hesitation, I ran. I ran up the stairs and through the house. I didn't know what was wrong with her, but I was finally free from her clutches. As I made my way to the front door, I noticed that something was very wrong. Every mirror in the house was covered, and the house was illuminated only by candlelight. There were strange sigils etched into the walls, and demented sounding laughter coming from every corner of the house. What was happening? I thought to myself as I scrambled through the house. I was thoroughly confused and disoriented from spending so much time in a pitch black room. Well, I tried to reach the front door, but things seemed out of place. Not the way I remembered them. As if someone had turned the house backwards. Finally, I did reach the front door through a long hallway that leads to the basement doorway. I tried to open it in a frenzy, but it wouldn't budge. Suddenly, I heard soft footsteps behind me, approaching fast. I turned around and was greeted by the most abhorrent person, well, if you could call it that, that I had ever seen. It was around eight feet tall, had long limbs with long, bony fingers, and was almost bone white. Its bare, emaciated form was covered by a thin, translucent skin. It crawled towards me like a child climbing upstairs on all fours. Its arms and legs pushed off the floors and walls as it made its way down the long hallway towards me. I could only see it move when it passed by the candles, which were extinguished as it passed by. I frantically tugged on the doorknob until it eventually broke off, my heart sank. I was going to die by whatever this thing was. Finally it got to me and stood up straight. It grabbed me by the shoulders with its bony fingers and stared directly at me. It had no eyes, only gaping caverns where its eyes should have been. It had an elongated jaw that hid rows of large human-like teeth and a forked black tongue. It seemed to peer into my soul with its empty eyes. And finally... It spoke to me as I stood, paralyzed by pure terror. Your sins, your fear, they taste so familiar. It hissed in a raspy tone as its tongue ran across my face. I tried to punch it, but it was as if I'd punched a brick wall. The creature just cackled. You just hit your mother, boy. It was over. I knew I was going to die. The creature had moved its hands to my neck and begun squeezing and lifting me off the ground when 
Suddenly I heard the pantry door swing open from downstairs. The creature quickly diverted its eyes and threw me to the floor as it sprinted down the hallway towards the basement. I heard it dive down the stairs as the front door suddenly cracked open. I ran as hard as I could until I finally reached Eddie's house. That thing could have my evil grandmother for all I cared. I was able to use their phone to call for help. I told the police that someone had broken into my house and that my grandmother had locked herself in the basement. The police found the house completely ransacked, but found no sign of my grandmother. The only real anomaly the police found was that the pantry was locked from the inside. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. If you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.